Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Sears. I am the admin coordinator for the Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation. And today we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks for optimizing our Outlook processes. So I'm going to talk about two things. Primarily, I'm going to be talking about rules, but I'm also going to be talking about their uh, very close cousins, quick steps. So here we have, uh, you could, you'll notice that these things um, will light up whenever you've got an email selected. For example, if I don't have an email selected, um, some things will tend not to show up, but because I've got this selected, I've got a bunch of options up here. You'll have a bunch by default, but uh, what quick steps are is uh, they are bas basically push button activated um, commands. So you can build these, edit these, or craft your own. And so by default, there are a bunch on here. One of my absolute favorites is this one that says new meeting with. New meeting with is a really great single button press that will take all of the people that are currently attached to the email, as well as the contents of the email, and it will create a meeting invitation. So if I go ahead and hit new meeting with, you'll see that right off the bat, Barb, the person who sent the email, Danny, who's the person that is CC'd on it, as well as myself, it will open up a meeting invite. So from here, it's really, really easy to just boom, make it a Teams meeting, go ahead and schedule it, and go from there. That's one of my favorite uh, like built-in tools because it makes it so easy to turn an email into a meeting, and I use it all the time. I wanted to draw attention to it. So what do these uh, buttons do? So there's a bunch here that are available by default. Um, so some will automatically move things to folders. Some will generate new emails, uh, but you can set up all sorts of functionality. So let's go ahead and take a look at one. So I've got this one that says to manager. So I actually recently had to change this one because I changed jobs. So I had to change who my manager was. So it's really easy. So when you hit uh, this create, oops, yeah, so when you click this little corner arrow thing, it will open up the editor. Um, the editor lets you sort or arrange the existing quick steps. I have the new meeting with at the top because it's my very favorite. Um, and it shows you in the description what each one does. So basically this one replies with a meeting. So let's go to my to manager. So basically it says this command just sends a forward. So it forwards the selected email to your manager because you can create these tooltips. So I was able to go in and hit edit. Oh, and it uh, did not save my change. So this is a great chance to change it. So I'm going to change it to Danielle Fitzko. So the name of the thing is still to manager. The action, the list of available actions is available right here. So I could change the action or I could add actions. So like if I wanted to, when I click this button, have it go to Daniel Fitzko and also uh, move to a folder. So let's say I want a folder dedicated to my things I've escalated folder. Um, we could do things like that, or we could delete it, right? Because I forwarded it now, I don't care about it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, now, when I push this button, it will automatically forward it to Danny and delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, so you can also append shortcuts to these. So if you just want to do a little shortcut command, you can do that and you can customize the tool tip. I'm actually going to not do that. So if you like the functionality of this and you like the way it looks, you will love Power Automate because Power Automate is like a super version of this that you can also schedule and do a lot of crazy cool things with. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And to create a new one, you can just go to new. You just have to sort of flag the type of action that you want to work with. So like, let's say I want to create a new email to my team. Well, let's say I just created that and go in and edit it. So I can now find my entire team right here. I'm going to delete this other step that is not doing anything. And now all I have to do is with one press of an email, I automatically get an email to my team. I don't have to remember emails or type it out. Now, obviously, I it's a very 
short time saver this one is, right? Because I can remember the names of five people, but uh, it's one click of a button to do it. And there could as easily be 500 names on this list. If I'm constantly sending emails to the same group of people, I can do that very easily. Um, so you can either do this and do new, or you can just click this create new and it will go in right with a quick step. So uh, you can do categories for messages. So you can automatically pick a category. So these pick up the same categories that, for example, I have set up in my um, in my Outlook calendar. So if I want to tag an email as a particular process improvement thing or a coaching thing or a learning and manage a leadership and management thing, I can easily have it do that. And I can have it do six other things, right? I could have it choose a category and then I can mark it as red and then I can go ahead and flag it. And we can set up all sorts of things like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I don't want to save any right now. But this is a this has been a quick little run through of quick steps. Any questions on quick steps before we move on to rules? Yeah, go ahead, Melissa. John, when you were showing the new meeting um, and it created an invitation, if you wanted that to be Microsoft Teams, would you would it um, populate auto populate those names, or you have to put those names in if you so, click Teams meeting? Well, so when I click that button, it creates a new meeting invitation. If I want to make it a Teams meeting, all I have to do is click the Teams button. And OK, and if, the names stay OK. Yep, everything right. stays the same. That's gr um, that's great. Yeah, if uh, it, it will kind of like tag it at the end with the, the Teams meeting stuff, but it'll function just like a normal Teams meeting does. OK, so great. Thank you. Couldn't be any easier from that perspective. Any other questions about quick steps? I mean, you can treat it kind of like um, you're building a macro. If you've ever messed around with macros in Word or Excel, um, you just sort of build out the steps. And if you start playing around it and you're like, oh, this is really great. I wish I could do the same kind of stuff for across six different applications, then we're talking Power Automate and we'll definitely be talking Power Automate in the future because Power Automate is like this on steroids. It's incredible. All right, any questions on quick steps? Okay, and um, any of you are obviously welcome to follow up with me if you, I would suggest trying it. So trying to build a step of your own, um, whether it be a, like a two manager forward or a team email or something like that. And if you get stuck, reach out to me and we can work through it together. All right, so that covers quick steps. Now we're gonna talk about rules. So whereas quick steps require you to push a button to activate them, Rules are um, things that are activated. So by default, if I've got an email selected, it is automatically going to give me some suggestions. And you're like, what are these suggestions? Always move messages from Barb. Always move messages to Danny. So it's trying to intuit what I want to do with these emails because basically, these rules trigger when these emails arrive and it's looking for certain criteria to act on. So I can go ahead and say, okay, well, I want things from Barb because Barb is HR or was HR. Um, I always wanna move things from Barb. So I could easily set up things from Barb and have it go to um, a particular folder. So I'll have those go to uh we'll have them go to reference right so i just said okay and now there's a rule it can be that easy literally now any email from barb that i ever get that's got from barb is gonna go to that folder automatically right straight from the inbox right in to that subfolder so right off the bat it's doing that search but rules are so much more powerful than that so we can either go to create a rule or we can go to manage rules and alerts for Manage rules and alerts. I'm going to go ahead and show you those. So I've got a couple that I've built here. Uh, I want to get rid of this barb one. 
So it's as easy as hitting the delete button and it goes away. So I've got a couple on here. Um, I have special uh, things right here for when I used to eat at the cafeteria because uh, I was sick of getting those messages from their application. So I had them going to a separate folder. I'm going to show you my absolute favorite um, must have rule in the entire world. And that's this meetings one right here. So when you click on a rule, you can see that the rule description is is showing right here. And for each one of these underlined items, that's basically a variable that you can change. And so you can read it and see exactly what's supposed to happen and also change it if it's not what you want. So we can read it and see what happens. So apply this rule after the message arrives. So message comes in, hits the inbox with accepted in the subject. So I am looking for meetings that have been accepted because I don't want to be getting all those emails in my inbox. They're just clutter in my inbox, right? They're just people saying, yes, I'm attending this meeting. I am only concerned if they are tentative or if they've declined. I really don't care if they've accepted, but I don't want to lose them because sometimes they'll put replies in those. So I still want to have access to them. So I want them all grouped together so I can look at them when I feel like it, not feel pressure to clear out my inbox with them. So when they have accepted colon in the subject, move it to the calendar folder because I have a folder that I've set up in my inbox that is for calendar. And all of the calendar items in there are accepted meeting invitations. And I go in there once a week, once a month, whenever I notice that there's a bunch in there and I take a look and I delete them because uh, I don't have to put a lot of thought into them, but maybe I'll look through them really quick if I've got a meeting coming up and notice if there were any um, things coming up. You can do this with a large number of criteria. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do a new rule. So there's a couple of things you could do. So by default, things run from apply this rule after the message arrives. But depending on the thing we're trying to do, uh, it, it gives you a couple of templates from the most common ways you use rules. So typically you can move messages from someone, messages with specific words in the subject, um, messages sent to a public group or folder. Mm -hmm. So that would be like, um, uh, so sent to people. So if it is, if I get a message from Danny and I want to give them special privileges, right, because she's my manager and I don't want to get in trouble for not staying on top of her emails, I can build a rule that does special things with those. Or if um, it's set to someone specific. So let's say I am a part of, well, I am a part of the state's green Greenbelt network and I want to do something special with those emails. So any of those emails that come into my inbox that are entitled, that are um, addressed to the Greenbelt network, I can put them in a special Greenbelt network folder. And you can automatically display items from people. So one of the things about um, managing your inbox is you shouldn't, you shouldn't always be in your inbox. You shouldn't be handling emails the second they come in. Ideally, you should set aside focus time to work on something, but you're worried, right? You're worried that big email will come in, you will miss it, and so you don't feel comfortable like not checking every email that comes in. Using rules, you could bypass that a little bit. You could say, okay, I am not gonna check my email, but there are a couple of people that I'm I want to make sure I respond to even if those things come in. You could display mail from someone in the new alert item window. So you could set it up basically so that um, I want to know if Danny sends me a message, but I don't really, I, you know, I'm doing some deep dive work. I need to focus. So I'm going to go ahead and not check my email unless Danny does something so I can have a display mail when Danny sends something. So I know that's something that I need to pay attention to has shown up. Otherwise, any other emails, I will worry about them during the two or three times during the day when I'm supposed to check my mail. I wish I was better at doing that than, than I have proposed to you now. 
Um, you can do the same thing where you play a sound or send an alert. Um, you can automatically send messages back or trigger sending messages. These are all things that you can set up in rules. So we're just going to go ahead and um, flag messages from someone for follow up. So let's say, um, man, Danny, you're staying on top of me with all these projects, right? I got to make sure that I respond to every email you send me within two days because um, that's how I make you happy. So I'm going to go ahead and flag messages from someone for follow up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now that I've done that, that's kind of like the default template is um, apply this message when the message arrives from. Danny. And a uh, flag message for follow up uh, tomorrow. So I have until tomorrow to do it. Every email I get from Danny right now with this rule built as it is, is going to um, automatically get triggered for follow up by tomorrow. But I don't just want to respond that way to every message Danny sends, right? Because there are a lot of topics that you might be sending it to. So let's say I just want to have that reaction to emails that Danny sends me that are marked high importance because you can mark your emails with the level of importance they have. They can be either, um, they can be uh, several different levels. So all I have to do, because we're selecting the conditions. So by default, it will do an and. So now if I get messages from Danny and they're marked as importance and emails can have high, normal, or low importance. All right, so now, hi. Now only emails that Danny sends that are marked high importance will automatically get that follow up tomorrow. And we can expand that. We could say um, assigned to a category or um, with selected properties. These could be extremely powerful and these get really complicated really fast. So you can actually have like, you can be looking for certain forms in here and I've gotten lost in that b land before, but it is it is doable. So there are a lot of conditions that you can add or subtract as you need to sort of build the rule you want um, based on these foundations. So now I, so I mean, I could have hit finish right away. I didn't even have to add this marked importance. I could have been done with any email from Danny getting marked, but we can continue to modify these. So now that we have um, selected our triggering uh, conditions, we're talking about selecting action, actions. So right now we're flagging messages for follow up, but we can do other things. So now that I've marked it for follow up, it's in my tasks, right? So I don't need the email anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. You know what? I don't even want it sitting in my deleted folder. I'm just going to go ahead and permanently delete it gonna make it go away forever it gives me a warning because it's like you sure about that um or uh maybe i have it set up to move to a specified folder right so um i'll have all those messages that i've marked and are in my to-do list automatically flowing to my to-do folder so i can sort of treat it like that inbox that i set up for uh calendars right i check it every once in a while i've got my to-do list i'm really good uh, you can automatically reply using a specific template. So you've got to build these templates. I don't have any in here, um, but you can build them. And that's sort of some high level functionality that we're not going to get into here, uh, but we can do other actions. And okay, so I get emails from Danny and she marks them high importance, but I know that a certain subset of those emails are actually not things that need to be marked tomorrow. Uh, I don't have to do them that way. So I can say, except where it contains certain words, because uh, I don't want to act quickly on items that are about UVA. Uh, UVA is not my top priority right now, right? I'm working on something else. So I can just say, look for UVA, add. Now 
if the subject or body contains UVA, it will not do those actions. And finally, once we've built all the conditions we want, and at any point through this process, you'll notice these are all down here. I can change this. It's like, oh, I meant I meant low, right? Or oh, not UVA. Um, move that. Uh, timber sale. So now timber sale stuff doesn't get this treatment. You can give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, alert for Danny. And uh, it gives you a couple of options here. So you can run this rule on your messages already. I'm operating in the to do folder, so it's going to ask me if I want to do it in the to do folder. Um, because if you've got an inbox that's full of clutter and you think that you can run a series of rules to automatically sort them, which I would highly recommend, um, you can have it run kind of retroactively. So it'll treat every email as if it just came in and it'll do whatever conditions you've specified or whatever actions you specified based on the conditions. And um, you can choose whether to turn it on or off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because I don't actually want to run it. Yep, it'll run only when you check your email and Outlook. That's fine. So, it, and it kind of shows you as an alert, right? So there's, um, it's showing you that there's going to be doing some moving involved um, and that it's doing some stuff with flags. And to turn it on, all you got to do is check the box. So now it's on. Now it's off. Now it's on. Uh, you can run rules whenever you want. So I can select any number of rules that I want to run on an inbox. So I want to run my alert for Danny. I'll have it run in the to do. Apply rules to all messages. You can specify which one I do there. I'm going to go ahead and run it now. It ran. It didn't find anything, right? Because there's nothing in there that meets those requirements. But it certainly can't. Um, you can also import and export rules. So if you like one of my rules and you're like, hey, I want to work based on that as a template, uh, I can export it to you and then you can import it. Uh, or I could just sit down and help you build it because you can see none of these things are, um, none of these things are particularly complex. Uh, it's really just look at the underlined item and change it. So uh, we just built that new rule, but I want to go and fix that alert for Danny. So I can go ahead and just change it right now. I could change it right in here. So I marked it back to high importance. Or I can go ahead and change a rule. So you can edit the rule settings. You can rename the rules. You can add the things to it. So we can go ahead and, and delete it. You can just add things right here without even going into the body of it and fiddling around with things with the way we did the builder. Um, you can sort them. So if I want this alert for Danny to sit at the bottom, I can do that because uh, if you've built like dozens of these, you'll probably want to be able to find the ones that you want to run sitting at the top. And you see now that I added the delete function, the little trash can is there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that rule that I just built. And then I'm going to stop for any questions. So questions about the rules system. You can also build alerts in here too, but we can talk about that another time. Jenny. Yes. Um, one scenario that I was thinking of as you're talking about this is I send out an email, let's say right before the holidays to 400 people, and I know there's going to be a huge quantity of people that are going to have auto replies that they are out of the office, why are you sending me this email before the holidays? Um, but every once in a while, one of those is going to be an auto reply that says, hey, I quit my job, take me off the list or something. So I don't want to delete them. Um, what's the best way, what, what kind of rule would be best to stick all those somewhere so that later on I can go through them? So um, you could handle that a couple of ways. So one would be, um, Basically, copy and paste the subject of the uh, of the email. So, like, 
if I want to get all HR notices, I can go ahead and create a rule that just says, um, you know, we'll, we'll do the move. Sure. Um, oops, I want to do with specific words in the subject, right? And then you just go ahead and paste in the subject line you want. So if you want to do a subject line of um, whatever your bounce back language is. So one of the things about these rules is that they run on a priority system. So based on the order that you sort them, they'll do the first thing first, then they'll do the next thing, then they'll do the next thing. So maybe the first thing you want to do is you want to grab all of the emails that come in that have the does not work here anymore version and have it go to one folder. And then you can do another rule that grabs all of the rest of them that are, you know, that just start with the um, automatic message language and have it go to a separate folder or just delete them. And you know, whatever, however you want to handle them. But that's how you would do it, right? You would do it with the specified words in the subject because you can um, do it that way. Uh, depending on the nature of those emails, they might come from a specified account. I can't remember exactly. I think it comes from the person. Um, but you can put in a number of uh, filters here. And again, it will run with whatever the first rule is in that order. So if the first one grabs all of the ones that are bounce backs because they're not eligible, you know, they're not around anymore, you can collect all those. Does that make sense? Thank you. I'm going to assume that means yes, that made sense. <laughs> or I'll follow up with you later, John, because that didn't make any sense. OK, thank any you. other? Thank you. Uh, any other questions about rules? Again, these are. Um, Th this is also another one of those examples where some of the functionality here is very reminiscent of what Power Automate can do, but Power Automate doesn't just do it in Outlook. It can do it in Outlook. It can do it in Forms. It can do it uh, in SharePoint. It can do it in a lot of systems, and it can interact with all of them. So if you see things here that you like, we'll be talking about Power Automate in the future. I promise you that. Um, because it is just like this, but like many times the scale and capability of rules and quick steps. Because in addition to triggering based on the emails coming in and triggering when you push a button, it also has triggering based on dates or schedules. So it's very powerful. Any other questions about rules or quick steps or anything else I've shown you in Outlook. Any other generic Outlook questions that you want to ask? John, can you um, just quickly show us again the quick steps for deleting accepted meetings? Because like I just sent out one yesterday and I probably got 30 accepted back. So that would be one I'd be like. Well, so that would be that would be a rule. Oh, that's so, a rule. Yep, yep. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I click on rules, and then I'm going to go to uh, manage rules and alerts because mine's already built. So for you, you could you could do that same thing and then click new rule. But we can go ahead and make another one right now. So uh, the easiest way to do it is actually um, if you get if you already have an accepted in your calendar um, because you can automatically have it funnel in. But I'll show you how mine works. Again, so apply this rule after the message arrives with accepted in the subject. So you're going to be doing a move messages with specific words in the subject to a folder. Specific words being accepted. Right? Yep. Hit OK. Move it to the specified folder. You'll have to create the folder before you do this because um, you can't like. Actually, I think can you can you create it. Folder. You can. Yep. So instead of, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. So uh, accepted in the subject line, that condition's fine. I just need to do something with the specified folder. So instead of um, move it to the specified folder, uh, and I don't know how that got on there, I'm going to delete it. 
Okay. Yep. So now anything that comes in that says accepted colon, it'll get deleted. And it's that easy. And I would encourage you to play around. Um, one way of testing is uh, if you're if you're worried about accidentally deleting something, create a folder that's called deleted, right, and set things up to move to that folder so you can verify that the right emails are getting moved before setting it up to delete. Then just go ahead and make it a delete action instead of a move action, because you saw how easy it was to just click off the check mark and put on the other check mark. I do like to see the ex I do like to have access to the accepted um, calendar invitations because sometimes people put replies in them. And uh, while I'm talking about replies to meetings, um, I want to encourage folks, anyone that's listening, when you reply to an email, please send a response. Um, because if you don't, it will not show up what your status is for that meeting. Uh, it can be annoying to get uh, to get those emails back, but if you encourage them to also watch this video, then they'll know how to handle those accepted uh, invitations. All right. Any questions, concerns, challenges, anecdotes? I think some people are using rules like Leslie. I think you're using them for UVA, so it'd be cool to kind of share out if people are using them and how they're using quick steps or rules. Yeah, the county foresters are using um, rules for UVA submissions so that they go into different categories based on what kind of submission it is, but those are supposed to be sent to the county forester, not to me. Um, I use the rules mostly for things that are clogging up my inbox that I want to have but not look at like um, your WB Mason order is on its way it this item is back ordered um, you know a lot of uh, Amazon and, and WB Mason invoice stuff um, I forget what else but yeah it's usually stuff that I want to have but not look at right now oh there's an automated thing with uh, UVA um, that EQ's uh, system database sends random emails um, that are automated and we don't really need them, but I don't want to lose them either. So they just automated email comes into me and it goes into a folder and I haven't looked at them yet, but I might need to eventually. Yeah, this is a great way of handling um, automated emails that you just don't care about or might potentially care about and just want to archive. Um, it saves a lot of time from having to going through and find them and delete them. Uh, it helps a lot. And if they're not sitting in the inbox, I don't think they show up as a, um, as a little red dot. So it helps you ignore your inbox a little better too. Which again, you should be ignoring your inbox based on uh, modern working theory. I wish I could, but I don't think I ever <laughs> will. Um, and one and one reason is sometimes that's the quickest way, even though we have a building intercom, that's the quickest way to send everybody or at least uh, people that are in the office most of the time, like me, um, a mass email to all departments in the uh, the building when there's an emergency and when it's when somebody doesn't get on the intercom. So sometimes that's one reason. But I just never know. I just if I don't respond quickly to the staff, they you know, I, I don't think I could get that through to Tim that I'm just going to ignore emails for a while when somebody's out in the woods and they they just want a quick, you know, something that's only going to take me a couple of minutes. I, I don't know. I, well, it's hard to always... teach this old dog new tricks. <laughs> well, you could always set up an exception that uh, for the high alert yeah. emails or um, you know the, the important the ones marked important. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to to tackle it. And I am not I am just telling you what modern theory suggests about optimal yeah. working conditions. I am not a poster child for not checking my email constantly, but historically I have also not been the kind of person that gets hundreds of emails in a day. So, you know, take my condition with a grain of salt. 
but I, I see great value in some of um like the clutter ones like leslie was sharing like the automatic responses like they don't you don't need to see that yeah. shiny thing popping up um i also for me found it very valuable when i took off the email alerts because i may still have my email running in the background but then i would see it pop up in a team and then i'd be like shiny new object and it would totally distract me so that was a helpful 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 for me to do yeah and um when we do talk about power automate you want to talk about uh crazy cool things you can do to get people's attention if there's an emergency in the building how about one button press sending an emergency alert to simultaneously um teams email sharepoint like you can hit people across every channel imaginable with one button press like it makes the stuff we're doing in outlook here look like baby's first programming it's it's really really cool and i'm super excited to talk to you guys about it in the future but um you know moving forward moving forward if uh you have some ideas or you want to run some stuff by me for hey do you think we could set up a rule to do this and just get some uh, consultation or something i'm happy to chat about it and i wanted to share it to at least put us on the on level playing field when it comes to outlook I have some new quick steps and I have one new rule. <laughs> Great. At that <half> hour. <laughs> yeah, I I love that uh, new meeting with button. I, like that has saved me so much time because it's just like, I want a meeting with all the people on this email. Boop. All right. Any, we're basically at time. So any last questions, concerns? I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.